Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to the uh, this little special webinar we're doing, and our guest is Rosh Sillers. Uh, I met Rosh uh, several years ago here in Phoenix when he spoke at ASMP, and we've stayed in touch over the years. Um, Rosh is an author, a um, master marketer as far as social media for photographers. He really knows his stuff, and has uh, written extensively to provide information that is to help photographers. And I, uh, we are kindred spirits that way. We love photography and we really, really want to um, help the industry as much as we possibly can. So, uh, uh, and by the way, our panelist, uh, uh, Rob Davidson is here to take your questions. Uh, and if you'll just hold off on the questions for about 20 minutes and then Rob will feed the questions to us and we'll get some answers. So. Um, I'm going to turn the screen over to. to I don't know Rosh. if you'll be able to. I just yeah. I mean, I I, I called in on Skype, so we may be out of luck. On oh, that. I okay. Just realized, I just realized. Um, if you wish, you can you can head on over to food.roshsillers.com or rosh.com. If you yep, wish we to are share at, a couple images. We are at rosh.com. So okay, perfect. We are um, we're good. Then that's what they're seeing right now. Okay. So. Rosh, thanks for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me on. It's, it's going to be a great topic. Excellent. Yeah, the um, the article uh, went pretty viral as far as I can see. It did. It really did. And it really um, it, it met the criteria of viral um, for the fact that, it, again, it kept growing. You, you know, you, you start off at a certain pace and then you just see more and the, it just gets more and more rapid and it just kept going for days. And uh, hey, it just you know brings a tear to your eye when <laughs> you feel like you know what some people are appreciating something that you've worked so hard on, and and especially because just like you, uh, we like to share good information with photographers to help them. And uh, so hopefully, you know, a few people got some uh, some information that will be of support to their business. Well, and it's really really good information, Raj. I mean, it's um, we, we you know you're you're on with the Project Fifty Two group here and we're always talking about pricing and it's such a difficult area for folks when they're starting out as photographers it's so difficult to navigate those waters what do i charge and how do i how do i get there mm -hmm. but uh um it's a fantastic and that little calculator you built we'll get to that shortly here yeah um, yeah um but let's talk a little bit about rosh the photographer who lives in detroit Yes, of all places. Of all places, <laughs> yes. I mean, we, you know, we we and understand like, that like blogs, SEO, and photography, Detroit's dead, isn't it? I exactly right. So <laughs> I, I, I guess I like to say this. If I can make it here, I can make it anywhere. So just hope I don't move <laughs> to, you know, to your town. I mean, that's, uh, I'm obviously joking when I say that, but there's a sense of truth to that, you know. Oh, you really absolutely. Gotta, you got to do it right if you're going to survive in the town that just went bankrupt a couple of years, especially in that, you know, just that downturn we had a few years ago. I mean, not just, I never will ever, ever suggest that it didn't hurt my business. Of course it did. Um, but I survived using these ideas yep. that, um, that we're going to talk about. And my business has continued and continued to grow. You know, I've always said um, there's that, you know, wonderful song by um, Sinatra, about New York. If I can make it here, I can make it anywhere. Exactly. Oh, I think it's I think it's backwards. If you can make it in Detroit or Albuquerque or Phoenix there or is. Sacramento, New York will be a walk in the park. <laughs> Robert, would you agree or disagree? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. I <laughs> New York can certainly eat you alive at times. I bet yeah. it can. It sure. It, <laughs> yes, but it's a good point, Don. It's it's yes. certainly a, an easier market here as far as there's a lot more work here than than Kansas City or something. There's there's probably, uh, and no exaggeration, there's probably more clients in one building in New York than <laughs> totally than you true. may find in all of you know other small towns or, or yeah, medium. There's also towns. more photographers. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Um, they're like little cockroaches running around right. the photo district. In the subway. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Well, uh, I'm going to flip over to your portfolio, uh, Rosh. I know you're on Skype, so if we flip yeah. over to the portfolio. I was going to ask you, you have um, a very interesting approach to your website. Your homepage is not just a big photograph. There's yeah. copy um, uh, and stuff. Why do you do that? If you don't that mind. is very SEO, search engine optimization. Uh, it supports that effort. If you type in Detroit photographer, I will be number two. Last year I was number one, but I'm number two behind Blake Disher, who you know I'm fortunate enough to be in in the same town as one of the SEO photography gurus. And so he and I kind of battle it out back and forth. And currently he's in first place, and we just go back and forth. And it's a fun rivalry. Blake's a great guy, and so you know both deserving to be where we are. Um, so, but. You know, sharing that information, Google can't read the thousand words that your photographs represent, so you need to share a little bit more about you. And plus, it helps clients understand who you are and what you're about. And so that's why I have all that information there. And I continue to adjust and change and, and try to add pages to my site. Uh, and so that, that's why. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you have two specialties, right? Food and people? I have three. Um, oh. Corporate people, and on the Rosh.com site, you go into the front page, you'll see a lot of faces there that may I mean, people outside of the Detroit area may not recognize, but people in Detroit certainly recognize. They're, these are well-known politicians and CEOs and people like that that are showing up on the front page and as well as that portfolio. So it's very Detroit-focused. And then I have other sites that are more focused for maybe more national clients. So I do corporate people, food. Uh, and interior work. And, so it's, uh, food, it's food? Food has been big. Food.rosh? Food, yeah. Food.rosh uh, food So use my last name in that one. Food.rosh okay. And there, there you'll find some of my food. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yep. And great SEO, De Detroit, Michigan food photographer. So let's just. Yep. That sounds like something someone would actually type into Google. Yeah. Interesting. Imagine that. So, <laughs> wow. Well, as know. as luck would have it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I'm I'm always experimenting with all my sites and uh always working on the SEO. But the SEO was a big part of um me surviving in in, in Detroit, making it easy for people to find me. Um but of course you have to have the portfolio once they find you and you also have to have the business relationship, uh, you know, to be able to actually land the job. So there are other parts to it, but making it easy to find you certainly gives you a leg up. Yes. Yeah. Because that's the marketing that gets done when you're doing something else. Right. Exactly. And um, yeah. all great, of us great. have experienced those, those craters and peaks that can happen when you get real busy, you stop marketing and then those jobs dwindle. And now you've got no jobs because you were so busy, you weren't marketing. And right. that was a, a quite a challenge back in the day. And now with SEO and with well-created websites and a strong book, hopefully you're being able to market when you're not there. Yes, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. And, and honestly, you know, I, 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 Last month, I turned down, you know, a good few thousand dollars worth of jobs because, you know, I didn't have the time. I passed it on to my, my fellow photographers that I, I network with, and, and that's great. It's a great position to be in. Um, obviously, there are ups and downs, you know. And there may, may be three months from now, I'll say, why did I turn those down? But, you know, the, the, the bottom line is people are calling regularly because they find me online, they like the portfolio, and uh, it, it's, it's very helpful. So let me ask you a little bit about um, the people finding you online. What would you say um, your website represents in percentage of work? Um, in terms of the clients that I have right now, I would say, especially because I just landed an international account uh, this year and it came from SEO relationship, I would say it's about 80% now. Wow. And, you know, and I mean, we get calls every, you know, sometimes there's a few weeks there are no calls, but sometimes we're getting calls every day 
okay. I mean, it just depends. Obviously, we know this business goes in waves, and so the same with people searching for what I do. And, and I and I rank pretty well for different areas, and and so you know I have different opportunities developing all the time. So, and I have yeah. If you really look at my client list, yeah, a good portion of them are still clients that they found me via searching, you know, for a photographer in Detroit, whether outside of the state or within the state. Um, how much of your work is Detroit based? Because I'm looking at your food work here. We're that's what we're kind of flipping through now. Um, mm -hmm. We're looking at the food, and um, this is uh, very good food photography, Raj. I'm sure you know you you, Thank you. know that you're quite Thank good you. at it. Um, but th this is uh, this is national work. Would I am I right with that? Yes, it is. A lot of them are Detroit-based companies doing national work. Uh, my biggest client right now is International, um, that I do hero shots for for uh, on a regular basis. So uh, my my portfolio you know, really took a big step up when I got a great stylist that we've built a great relationship. Um, his name is Ross, by the way. <laughs> so it's Ross and Ross on set. Uh, <laughs> but it confuses our directors, but we're okay. And he's really helped. And then these new clients that have been pushing us to the next level and limit. I mean, in the next six months, my portfolio should take another nice step up in terms of quality. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with the food work. I have a feeling that's a big part of my future is the food side. If I have to kind of, you know, end up focusing because obviously I have multi, two, two careers with the marketing side as well at, in the speaking, in the books and all that, uh, you know, so I may have to pare it down and focus on one area versus three and food may be it, but I'm, I don't know if I can let go of the corporate people either. So interiors that can is slowly fading. Ah, uh -huh. That's interesting. Um, is the interiors, are they on a separate site as well? That would be interiors.roshsillers.com. And, and then I also have people.roshsillers.com, which you'll see some familiar shots, but certainly hasn't been updated in a while. So I have people food interiors surrounded by my blog site, roshsillers.com. And you say, why is that? Because when I send out a, 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 um, a post that was really good that worked and goes viral and, and people are linking to it and sharing and all that great stuff's happening they're, and they're sharing in social media all it's doing as much of anything is it's also pushing my portfolios up the search engine ranking because they're linked to that that domain and it's interiors dash rots com. correct am i spelling it wrong or, or interior it may be interior okay maybe no s Maybe no All answer. right, because I'm just I'm getting the dreaded um, Cox yeah. thing, interior dot rush. Yeah, that that's it, interior. There we go. Okay, same type of same. Well, you kept the the branding is pretty much the same here. Yep. Slideshow, very easy, and the um, uh, one thing I like I I very much like about what you're doing here, Rosh. Um, from my web design and SEO experience is that uh, I tell photographers, get your pictures on the front page. Um, yeah. And, and that's what they came to look at. They didn't come to yep. look at, you know, click here for flash. <laughs> <laughs> right. For your great intro. <laughs> yes. Where your name spells one letter at a time. That's always so special. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're getting your stuff right up there. And it also, as you say, really helps with the, uh, Stuff and the interiors are they mostly local to the Detroit area? Most of them are. Yeah. I, I have uh, traveled um, for some clients. I spent a couple of years traveling with a few clients, which is very interesting. But that you know, that was more industrial. So most of the stuff is local, local magazines and things like that, and interior designers. Excellent. Well, I'm gonna flip over to people and. There we go. Detroit, Michigan people photographer. Yes. All right. Well, very good. I was uh, I was looking at the Rosh Sillers uh, dot com, which is mostly your corporate um, work. Or the the Rosh dot com. Yeah. Rosh dot com. Yes. Uh, mostly yep. your corporate yep. work. Uh, very cool. So you are working in what would be considered a small market, but you're pulling in clients from the world. Mm -hmm. through your website. Had, yeah, 
I mean, I've had clients, I've had full page ads in Beijing, I've had um, work, I mean, it's really just everywhere, Seoul, Germany, all sorts of stuff. I mean, all over. I mean, it's a, it's a, I mean, Detroit is a, a small market, but we do still have the, the automotive industry, and we do have some big agencies that do have a few larger clients, and I certainly um, can participate in that a little bit. I try to stay away from automotive. Automotive is a pretty tough place to be. Uh, so I, I never really went down that path. And my background was photojournalism. So I've taken that step of a weekly photojournalist to daily to, you know, magazine photographer to, you know, corporate and advertising. So I've taken that journey. I'm not one of the guys, you know, some of my photographer friends, you know, work for a really good photographer, well-known photographer, and then spun off exactly what they're doing almost at that level on their own. Uh, I didn't do that. I had that gradual path. Uh, and I appreciate it. It was, it was good. It's been a good journey. Excellent. Do you do any uh, direct mail or? No, um, I don't. Um, not that I'm not against, I'm against it at all. I think direct mail is actually very good. And I think right now it's probably better than ever, quite honestly, because pe not people aren't doing as much direct mail. So the competition for that um, isn't as bad. I mean, there's you can certainly debate that, but I, I think direct mail is not a bad way to go. Um, the the and I, I've been telling folks that, um, you know, as long as it's really targeted, um, mm -hmm. I think that shotgun blasting of sending out, you know, 2,500 postcards, those days are gone. That's yes. just silly. But if you really target somebody, it's nice to have multiple channels of getting in touch in, in front of them. Um, yeah. I just wrote a, a post for my newsletter called It's a Numbers Game, Part 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. And part two mm -hmm. talks about how many times you have to touch that client before they yep. even begin to remember you. Right. Absolutely. Um, I refer that to that as combination marketing and, and how, what are your steps and your, your plans? You know, maybe you can, you're, you're combining a, an email list with a Facebook campaign, uh, which you can do um, with their, their system. If you, if you have a big system, um, but but what are the different areas in there, the different ways you're going to touch that group? And what is the combination of marketing you're going to use? And, yeah, you really do. You can't just sort of send out something and sit there. And you even need to think about down the funnel. What When somebody calls, what what's next? What is the process? Do you send out, you know, do you, do you start with a certain um, protocol or, or um, process? Do you, you know, do you send a thank you note right when you're off the phone? Do you make sure you get certain information? Do you know those things? Uh, or do you just answer the phone and, and wing it every single time? And so I think there's a process all the way through that you really do need to address and think about. And uh, can, you know, always have to practice and, and test because, honestly, it's um, – <laughs> things are always changing. <laughs> this this world of marketing is changing by the day. And so you really need, need to continuously be up on uh, new techniques and, and ideas and ways of going about it. And sometimes, sometimes it involves combining new school stuff with old school. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm a big believer in process. And because I'm a procrastinator uh, and, <laughs> and a, you blend com uh, procrastination with ADD and um, you can get yourself lost. You can forget to send out those thank you notes. You can do a, so I have a process and yeah. I stick to it. I, I talk in my, uh, my article about making sure you've got a little voice recorder with you. If you're not good at taking notes and the moment you leave that office, you get down to the lobby or your car, you pull it out and you make notes. Sure. Because if you, That's if you forget, you're, yeah. you're gone. And, yep. and, and you uh, can always, you can always save it like on Evernote or something like that, mm -hmm. voice recording and then tag it. So you can tag it for it with, you know, different clients or different topics. It, yeah. That's an excellent idea. Yeah. I say note, note what, what's on their walls. You, you just met with Bob and what's on his walls. Are they sailing pictures? Is he into hot air balloons? Um, is he, does he, you know, is there magic stuff around because people's cubes in their little places, they're going to tell you what they're interested in. You just got to observe. Excellent point. And we yep, are excellent point. photographers. So, mm -hmm. well, let's talk a little bit about the pricing thing. The pricing game sure. always comes up when we're talking with, uh, photographers. And I think it's one of the, uh, oh, before we do that, you've written mm -hmm. several books. Let's, let's do just 
this is kind of like late night TV. Let's do a little book plug here. <laughs> <laughs> sure. uh, um, I've, I've written four books. Uh, one, I, my first book was um, a Link Photographer's Guide to Online Marketing and Social Media. Co authored that with Lindsay Adler. And, uh, and that, was, that was in 2010. Um, I wrote a book, uh, it's just an ebook form um, called One Hour Photographer. It kind of takes you through, you know, good basics of, you know, photography and some stories all the way through business of photography. And it's called One Hour. And I'm, I've considered creating a series out of this. It's called One Hour Photographer, not because you can learn everything in one hour. You know, of course not. Um, but it's because you, you should be able to read it within an hour ah. and, and get the basics of it and build from there. And, and then I've written two books uh, with Wiley on uh, the, the different with their digital field guide series, uh, which gives me the opportunity to uh, share ideas. I, I write on the, the Rebel uh, T4i and T5i and, you know, share, you know, how to take good photographs with your camera. And, and that, that was always, that's enjoyable. Uh, I always was so tempted, but I, I got to share business ideas here, but you can't, that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> but uh but I, I enjoyed those books, and uh, so my last one came out last, uh, I think, July for the T5i, and uh, so. But so that's been good. So those those four, and uh, I'm sure there'll be more in my future too. Well, I I got this uh, the T5i. I got it in the mail, mm -hmm. probably from your your list that you gave to Wiley, and yeah, I looked at it and I was like, why would someone send me this book? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it sat there for like a week, and I pick it. And finally, I look. Oh, Rosh wrote it. <laughs> now I know why I got the book. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and a good, right. darn good book too. By the oh, way, thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's 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 a tough book to write. It really is uh, because you have to write it in six weeks, and that's including taking the photos. So you know, the, when I look through wow. it, I say, okay. I could have had a lot better example for this or a lot better example for that. But you know what? At the end of the day, I just have to say, I did this in six weeks. The photos, the writing, all that stuff. I'm a wow. happy guy. It's done. <laughs> so, yeah. So that th those books, though, and, you know, if you ever pick up one of those books and, you know, get a little critical, like, well, there could have been a better example of that. Just know that for the, that photographer had to write it quick. So, wow. Um, and, yeah, and, of course, it's a skill. Of course, knowing that books are dead and DSLRs are dead too. I mean, so. Oh yeah. Oh, so, absolutely. It's so it's much all dying death. everything. Yes, it's all dead. <laughs> um, well, great. And by the way, um, um, I'm I'm mentioned in the LinkedIn Photographer's Guide. Yes, um, you are. Yes, and that was uh, really fun. That was great. Lindsay contacted me, and um, out of the blue, and I I wrote back to her, and I never heard from her, and then I got this book in the mail, and I'm like. What's this? And I found myself. So <laughs> was that was yeah. uh that's a good book. And that's that that's still a book that I recommend to photographers, even though yeah. social media has changed so rapidly, um, the way you guys wrote it from a concept standpoint rather than a yep. process yep. standpoint, it's still uh something to consider, guys. Uh you know, get it on your get it on your Kindle or on your on your um on your phone so that you can read it. Um instead of just sitting there in traffic or doing something, it's a great book to read. <laughs> I so appreciate that. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the things that we wrote about are still valid today, although, yes, you're right, there's Facebook changes the next day. You, you know, as far as yes. Facebook goes, it's absolutely the next day. <laughs> yes. But the concept's there. You know, and Facebook's dead, too, so it's... Yeah, that's right. Oh, right. That's right. <laughs> so, so much death. Well, uh, is, your, is the blog post at your blog, is that the Did pricing? The pricing, the yeah. blog post, yeah, th th that's at my blog, roshsillers.com. It's the latest one. It's what should photographers charge in 2014. Right. And, you know, it, it was quite the, um, you know, I, I spent a, a Sunday afternoon just pulling stuff together, and, and I wrote that in, in that afternoon. And, uh, you know, it's something that, it's just like you, I always having this conversation. With, with photographers and I like this, I, I have a few ways of explaining this to people and like how I explain per image pricing and how I lay these things out to hopefully make the case that this is again, not for everyone, but certainly for many cases is, is the right way to go. And when I say not for everyone, that's usually 
someone who does events, I can have a fair argument with somebody who says, you know what, per image pricing may not be right uh, and for, for event photographers, but mm -hmm. I've done weddings that way. You know, I don't do many weddings and I haven't done one maybe in 10 years. Well, yeah, about that. Um, but I, I certainly set them up that way and it worked out just fine. So, uh, but it's not just about per image pricing. I talk about the combination code. I talk about uh, different ideas that, that you can implement in terms of dealing with the whole topic of price. You're also, by the way, um, not advocating lowering prices. Not at all. No. Quite the opposite. Yeah. Quite, quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. It's, uh, if you I, can speak to uh, pricing from a, a mindset that other people understand, I think you can, you can make a case for higher pricing. Easier. Well, I, I, I think the best way to go about it is kind of, in, and I think you quoted this on your Facebook page, and I think is really just, let's get down to it. You know, the bottom line is nobody needs your photography, technically. I mean, in theory, if we're going to be realistic, there are all the cameras in the world. There is no need. There's always somebody a lot cheaper. Heck, we'll probably do it for free. And with the, the software and equipment we have available today, you know, you can, you know, an amateur can create a pretty darn good shot that we would kill for 20 years ago. So, you know, cell phones, who needs someone at your wedding? We got enough people's cameras there. I mean, there's so many reasons why $1 photography, heck, Getty giving 35 million images away for free. I mean, there is just no good reason for someone to hire you. But yet, there are a million good reasons for someone to hire you. And you need to have a good reason. You need to share that and, of course, market that. So if you just let it go and say, look, there is no good reason. So there is no price point. This is not, there is no going rate because the going rate is free. So since we're now there, you might as well look at, okay, what are my expenses? How much do I really want to make? And then base it off of that. Because if you try to figure it out any other way, you will just fail. You will race to the bottom or if you, you know, <laughs> just, or you'll just give up or, you know, who knows? There's so many, there's so many negatives to trying to figure out what the, perfect price point is just just set it up that in the way that's going to work for you and, and learn from that and start there that, that's fantastic that's great information that's you know we, we, i get lots of of uh, calls and questions like well how much do i charge for this and mm -hmm. you're not you're not telling anyone in this what to charge you're That's basically right saying figure out what you're going to charge and then make it a palatable number for your client. Um, yep. And now, uh, and then you created this great little tool, by the way. Now, it, did you have someone do this for you? Are you a, are you now a code no, I, wizard? No, as well? I co yeah, I coded that. That's all me. So <laughs> you can see my design skills aren't at the top of the list of what I do, but yeah, I was, um, I, I was, I was going to say something, but now I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, but the coding's all mine. <laughs> yeah, but but and this is what I've sent some folks to to say. See, he's not he's not talking about lowering your rates, or that he's talking about creating a way to do it that makes okay. sense and to different. Make more. Yeah, and make more. And different areas are going to have different prices. You can shoot a food shot in Omaha and make half what a food shot in New York would cost. Mm -hmm. I mean, same quality photography and everything. Um, there's yep. just, it's but all the over. Cost the of living was lower. Yep. Yeah, the cost of living was is much different. And and so you need to, you, yeah, you can't compare that. And But you can talk to the people in town. And I often recommend look for the top photographers in your town and and start asking questions about what their pricing is and start aiming towards that versus trying to look on Craigslist and see how low you can go. I, I really think you're going to be better off looking up and building up towards that. Because as I often tell people, when, when the, you know, they may, you may go in as the cheap photographer to, you know, a low price photography, low price option to get your foot in the door at some place. But the reality is they may give you that opportunity and they may even be happy to refer you to other people who need cheap, low price photographers. But when they have that big job, and their their job is on the line. They're not going to be hiring the cheap photographer. Nope. You know because if things go wrong, 
they're, they're, they're toast. Why did you hire the cheap photographer? Now, if you can better explain, say, look, I hired the best person possible. Look at their rates. Look at their portfolio. Look at everything. You know, everybody, I mean, they're, whatever you wish to present, but you, at least you can say, I hired the best because and they'll probably base it off of price, you know, <laughs> not, and so that, that's where you want to be. And there are a lot of photographers who charge an outrageous amount of money, in my opinion, but it's not outrageous because people pay it. Um, mm -hmm. I have, I, I've had many situations where I, I talked with, you know, one, one photographer, we, we've worked with the same client and or heard about a client who's willing to pay this photographer literally 20 times what they're ever considering paying me at certain points in my career. Like, wow, what is the difference? Why, why, why is the budget so tight when they talk to me but willing to just throw money, you know, like they just, you know, opened up an ATM, just, I mean, <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars for a shot they would pay me 500 for, literally, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. So what was the difference? And so I had to figure that out. And a lot of times it's just perception. You know, the expert mm -hmm. person from out of town. That's why, you know, they'll, they'll, that's why I focus a lot. I, I try to focus a lot on working with people in, in agencies outside of the Metro Detroit area because the, the expert's the guy from out of town. If they have to fly me in or something like that, then, then that, then, <laughs> then they're willing to pay. Or if they want to fly somebody in from Europe, you know, to, to shoot here, then they'll, they'll pay lots of money because they had to fly this photographer in from New York or Europe or LA, mm -hmm. but the local person who's going to do just as good a job, heck no, heck no. So it is perception. You need to develop that. And, and yeah, we're all fighting that battle. For four years, I had a client out of Los Angeles that would fly me to Tulsa, oh, I'm sorry, Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. where I would shoot a mall um, publication. Because yeah. there was no one in Oklahoma City who could shoot a trinket on white seamless. They had to bring me. <laughs> <laughs> and but I would just, true. you know, I took I took the job and I happily did it and cashed every one of those checks. But, Absolutely. you know, it was like there were probably 50 photographers in Oklahoma City. They could have got, but they wanted me. And, um, right. yeah, you're right. That's that out of town um, thing. The, the other thing, and I'm going to clue – uh, a lot of people that are listening in on this is something that people don't think of. Um, I, I did own an ad agency for 10 years. I was partner creative director for ocean integrated media, which started literally in my bedroom. Um, we were the, when, when, uh, when the tech bubble crashed and we um, started our slide into hell, um, we were the third <laughs> largest ad agency in Arizona. So um, 23 employees. It was uh uh, it was a big company, but we, um, mm -hmm. one of the things that you have to understand is that agencies make money on markup. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> if they hire me and pay me a thousand dollars for a shot, they make 180 bucks, 18% markup. If they hire Rosh and pay him $10,000, they make a thousand eight hundred eight per 10, 18% markup. If they hire some guy out of New York City and pay him a hundred thousand dollars, they make eighteen grand. Now, don't for a minute think that that those numbers don't enter in to the decisions that are made. They may not be the driving force, ladies and gentlemen, but they do enter in the decisions when you're dealing with the bigger agencies. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. No. Good. Good point. Excellent point. I mean, we would we would, and on several several situations we would practically give the creative away i mean we had two art directors working for us as creative director it was just hourly wage guys right we'll give the the uh the creativity away we want the placement we had one tech firm who hired uh what we were doing advertising for we did literally a quarter of a million dollars worth of ad placement a month for them mm. at 18 percent interest was i mean 18 yeah. percent markup you know, yep. we'll we'll design the damn ad. We don't, <laughs> it's it's yeah. on us, baby. <laughs> we design it once, we place it for six months, and we make you know a hundred something thousand dollars. So th those are those are things to think about. And I think the other thing is, as you said, perception is some people get a hundred thousand dollars for a shot because they asked for it. 
That's such a good point, and and that's one I use a lot. I mean, I talk to my students all the time and say, you know, the, the difference between the person at the weekly newspaper, quite often, obviously, there are issues in terms of skill in general, but a lot of times it truly is, you know, the person at the weekly newspaper versus, you know, New York Times, well, one took the path to the New York Times, actually visited them. I mean, a lot of times you just go to the New York Times and say, hey, you know, can I work here? And they say no, but get in the environment and find out what their standards are so you can build to that. If you think you're going to do that at the local weekly, that's not going to happen so well. So it really is just a matter of having your sites in the right spot. And as you said, ask. It's amazing how many times people say yes when you think, yeah, I wouldn't say yes. <laughs> you know, It's amazing. Well, let's, I would love for you to walk us through your, your um, post here. Sure. Sure. Uh, you know, I think, um, you know, the very beginning, of course, we're, we're, I think just setting up what we've already talked about, I think one of the things that people have been talking most about certainly has been per image pricing. That has been an area that I've gotten the most comments on, uh, the, the, the most uh, shares because of that, and, and emails. Because for a lot of people, you know, they think hourly, and, and, and here's the thing, maybe a day rate could have worked maybe 20 years ago when it really did take a day for the architect sure photographer to you know wrap every light and have the assistance set everything because you, you didn't have the post-production side that we have now you had to get it right the first time you know there's there's a cord in the wrong spot that's a lot of retouching dollars that you have to deal with and and so it was very important in terms of pre-production but now we live in a post-production era of photography and so if everything is built based on your time on site, you're losing money because most of your time is off site. And, and I often will even tell, you know, clients say, all right, you know, we spent three hours shooting this. All right, now the real work begins. I'll mm -hmm. often make that statement to those clients and it just strikes up the conversation. Oh yeah. You know, this, this is the easy part. You know, now I got to go do the real work. So they feel like they're getting value for additional value for what they paid for. But this is my favorite example that I like to, to use related to per, per image pricing. You know, and this is the example I used in the article. If, if, say, somebody comes to me and says, oh, we want to do a website and we need 10 images. It's kind of laid out. This is what they need. They want to do 10 images. And they say, how much will that cost? We'll have you go on location. Let's, let's say it's local usage. And I say, well, that'll be $1,500 for the day plus $500 for expenses. And the first thing, of course, they're thinking is, okay, I don't make $1,500 a day. Why, why is this guy going to make $1,500 a day? Um, you know, now we, we talk that perception thing, and, and maybe sometimes that works, and that has worked in, in many cases. You know, oh, a photographer, they make $1,500 a day. They must be worth it. But a lot of times that's not the case. Uh, and, and, and that's even a minor point. But let's say you – it done at one o'clock. You did a great job. You got all 10 images done and, and you're done at one. Now what do they want? They want a discount. Why? Because you're done at one o'clock and you gave them a day rate. And so, you know, they, they shouldn't have to pay for a whole day. And, and so there you go. You're, you're lost. And, and let's say you did, you, you did a great job and you're pretty much done at one o'clock and, and they said, Oh, well, wow, we have time. Let's, there's, there's some more people to photograph and some more parts of the building we could photograph. Let's, let's go shoot some more stuff, finish out our day. Oh, great. So you go and you shoot and you work hard and you didn't get anything extra for your effort or your uh, efficiencies or anything like that. Uh, yes, you have a happy client and that's a good thing, but you're still stuck with the day rate, although you did a super tremendous job. I, I have been doing that for several decades um, because uh, I learned right away that the better you get at photography, the more you can screw yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, they're they're going to pay this other guy a thousand dollars. It's going to take him all day, but because you've been shooting food for five years, you can do it in a half day. Now they only want to pay you seven fifty because you're in this right. sort of trading dollars for hours kinds of things. And actually, the right. photograph is worth the same. So we want the same money for it. Right. It doesn't matter how long. Value. Right. 
it, exactly the same value to that client is exactly right. So if you go to them and say, all right, for those 10 images, 200 bucks a shot. Now, a lot of times people say, oh, well, what if they don't select any or, or they only pick two? Well, that may be the case, and let me get to that in a moment. But if you say $200 a shot and you got done, all 10 images, done at 1 o'clock, now everyone's happy because you got done at a reasonable amount of time and Technically, you've now made you know four thousand dollars a day, if you want to think of it that way, and and the client gets off early. You know, go do other work, do whatever they need to do, and they're thrilled with the images. Or you're done early, and they say, "Wow, we have some more more opportunities to photograph. Why don't we take that time and take more pictures?" Now I'm thinking, "Yay!" You know, so let's say they they decide five more images. Now instead of two thousand, you've made three thousand dollars, and and that's usually what happens. The value has been placed on the image versus the time. $200 the image is a little easier to swallow than $2,000 a day. I don't know why. It's just a mental thing. Yep. And in plus, the client is now in control of the budget. And right. I always think I want the whole budget. I sometimes don't know what that budget is. But quite often, if they have $3,000 and I'm offering $2,000 for what it is, quite often they'll still spend that $3,000 with me. And that, that makes me happy. So yes, sometimes, and it's rare, but sometimes somebody doesn't pick all 10 images. But you know what? Because it's not based on my time, I'll often say, hey, let me come by tomorrow morning and finish this out or redo this shot. And they're usually like, oh, fine, because they're not thinking, oh, I got to pay another half day rate to get this done. You know, the, I want happy clients. And I'm willing to do that. I, I don't want clients. Let's say, let's say I did this day rate, and like I, I've heard many photographers say, okay, $2,000, but you know, we only like five of the images. Well, you, know, you contracted me for a day. I sent it to you. You take all the images. You know, I, I reserve this time for you. you know, I've heard it all, and, and it's true. But you have a client with five images that they hate. And to get them redone, they got to – you know, spend another 50% or 100% more. I don't want that. I want a client in the very end to say, wow, he even came back the next day to finish some stuff up or redo a couple things because it wasn't quite right, didn't cost us any more, and we love these images in the end, and we're going to hire him again or we're going to spread the good word. That's I want that. And, yes. and, and if you have some fixed costs like assistance or models or things like that, well, then put them in as a line item. Say, hey, I, I have a stylist that I, I'll say to the client, you know, if you don't like one image, you don't have to pay for any of my images, but you got to pay for the stylist. He's coming out to be there. So that's a fixed cost. So it's going to cost you this much for the stylist and per so many dollars per image. The, the rarity that people don't buy more, it, it's, it's just, I mean, so I've signed up for this system. So if that happens, if somebody doesn't buy any images, fine. It doesn't happen very often, but believe me, the number of times people buy more, which I would say is 60, 70 percent of the time, well makes up for any, any time that someone doesn't purchase all the images or, or none, which I don't think it's, it's you know, very few times in my career that's happened. Because I'm, I'm savvy enough to say, okay, what was the pain point here? Let's fix this because I want a happy client. Right. And this systemology gives me that flexibility to do that. So. You know, you can always say, okay, you know, so much per image, but you have, you know, minimum five images purchased. You needed 20, but I need at least five to cover my base expenses. So you can do stuff like that. And I say, you know, somebody who likes to apply this to, say, weddings or something like that, that may be what you need to do. And, and say, look, we'll give you so many images. And that also encourages them to go pick more images and so forth and, and get into the system. So there, there's a lot of ways to approach it. Um, you could have a base fee, then plus per image. That's been done, you know, just for me to show up. It is a thousand dollars, and then it's so many, so much per image that you, uh, that they select. I mean, there are a lot of ways to go about it. I don't go about it that way. I like to be known as the low risk photographer, and so I give them. It's a low risk, high value. I have confidence in my photography, and the better I do, the more they they purchase. So as a business person, I'm even doing better because I know I got to be on my game and I got to give them the best work I possibly can. So there's no sitting back, you know, feet up on the chair. 
I'm there giving them everything I can because I know my pay depends on how good of a job I do. And that benefits the client too. So there are a lot of benefits to this per image pricing. But the neat thing is if you do it right, you end up making a heck of a lot more. And now, and this, of course, doesn't, uh, this is generally not the model for ad agencies. Right. Or magazines. And, That's a different model. This yes. is direct client and small uh, manufacturers or, or, or large manufacturers for that matter, but it's mostly direct client. Am yeah. I right? Yes, you, absolutely. Hey, and that's why I don't work with a lot of big agencies. Um, I, I work with medium and small agencies that quite often will go for that um, because they can sell, you know, you can talk with them and they can sell it to the client. Right. You, you, you share, look, here's, here's the things I just shared with you, I can share to them. And if they're making a markup, they're learning how to sell more too. Big agencies generally don't listen to that argument. Um, but, you know, I, I do have, a, like I said, uh, an inter international client right now that we did a per image system and it works out. And, and actually they were like really surprised because we, uh, they often give me like a three quarter time frame. I mean, some of it's based off of time, but they, they give it a per image kind of a thing. And they, they saw us get it done in half the time and we're like, wow, this is awesome. It's better than, no, you know, and a lot of people have done for us, like, this is great, and you're doing it in half the time, you know, but they're not sitting there saying, well, then we're going to give you half the money. It's like, hey, this is great. This is wonderful. Maybe we'll just give you more work and give you two in a day. So it's it's all working out, and that's a rarity for a big agency. But um, but it, you can do it, if you, if you but you have to frame it and sell it right. And, yes, I've lost opportunities, uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes sometimes for big agencies, instead of, Instead of per image, I'll just say per project and just give them a big fat number and just say, here you go. And if they're happy with it, we go get it. And I'm probably in, in a pretty good shape anyway. Excellent. Well, let's let's uh, turn over to Rob and see, uh, Rob, if we've got some questions. Uh, so far, nothing's coming up. But actually, I have one for you. And it, it tailors right off of what you just said, Rush. Um, thinking about my own situation, um, I have some clients now that I'm working with that I'm doing a day rate situation, a day rate thing, some larger, some larger companies, and they're comfortable with it. They're, they understand the, the model. Of course, New York is rife with that sort of thing. So it's, it's just the standard. Um, but I'm also working to build um, yeah. in, in the music products industry, working with manufacturers that, you know, make widgets, so to speak, and they, they need product photography. Are you, are you successful yep. in like, Doing both? Can you have a you know these clients? This is a per pro, per image pricing, and for other you know it's just the day rates traditional model. Is that something you can do, or you really have to go one or the other? Of course, uh, no, no, you don't. Of course not. I mean, if you know your market, like you said, the agencies in general. Look, if it's an agency I really want to work with, and I give them a big fat number, and it's a kind of with a day rate attached to it, I'm going to do it. You know, if I'm happy with the deal. Um, so, yeah, you don't have to be one or the other. I'm just suggesting that, you know, one is better than the other. For example, I don't, I don't generally sign work for higher contracts. I, I you know, so it, I do find it amazing, though, how many times I just say I don't sign those and they say, oh, okay, just scratch that out then. <laughs> you know, that happens all the time. But sometimes they won't, you know, they won't budge. And I say, yeah, I just can't do it in this situation. You're not paying me enough for that kind of work. But some people are willing to pay me a heck of a lot of money to take all the rights. And, and I say, well, can I at least use it in my portfolio? Give me something in writing that I can use it for my portfolio. Sometimes it's worth it in the portfolio. Sometimes you know you have to make certain deals with certain clients and, and, you know, and the industry, understanding the industry norms. So don't cut off your nose if a great opportunity comes in front of you because they won't fit your per image pricing model. So yeah. So the answer is yes, you know, work, work in the areas in which you know it, it is working. And uh, it, again, with the agencies, I know if I want to work with a big agency, probably I'm just going to have to do the old day rate thing and uh, I, I'll live with it. But I, I just don't push that area of business because I know quite often the agency, well, unless they can, again, we're in that expert situation, the guy from out of town situation or um, or the, the guy, the, someone referred me from one agency, you know, to another, that kind of thing, um, where I know I can say, okay, I can offer my full value here, and they'll they'll accept it. But most of the time, especially if you're the local guy, they just want 
everything into work you like a dog. And I won't play that game. You know, there there are a million photographers who say, well, there are a million other photographers who will. I say, yep, you use them. <laughs> I'll, I'll stick with, keep them busy while I'm working with the people who will pay. Well, we do have some questions. I don't know. Um, I guess oh, I'm, I'm not sure it. how they, how they are not going to rob. I'm going to have to find out how to set this up. Sorry, Rob. But we have, uh, Gene asks, uh, this is a three-parter. What role does your blog play in your marketing? You have prices on your on your blog on your page, okay. and do you have an email okay. list? Okay, uh, um, I missed a second going in and out. So, what oh, part sorry. does my blog pay, play in my marketing? And yeah. do I have an email list? Do you have an email list? And and why are your prices? So, so what the, first... the reason for the pricing on the on the website? My, the reason I put it on the website? Okay. Um, okay, the blog, absolutely. Um, as I mentioned, the, um, you know, people.roshsillers.com, food.roshsillers.com, interiors.roshsillers.com. I've, I've created a media spot where people link to this information for photographers. And they, photographers actually link to roshsillers.com or photography-related things. That's very beneficial. Google says, wow. Photographers consider this site a valuable resource, and their portfolios connected to it, and some people even share and connect those portfolios, and it drives up the, the, um, the search engine results, which provides me opportunity and work. So my blog does pay me indirectly. It pays me because, you know, I get a lot of work because of the SEO related to it. So, yeah, and plus, you know, this opportunity today with Don, that came about because of the blog post. Now more people know about me. Maybe people check my, my blog out and link to it and share it. I mean, it's just a circle and they'll tweet it. It's this, this continuous circle. Let me share, and this is what I've been sharing with people, this secret to social media and search engine optimization. This is it. Activity. That's it. Be active. And being active out there in the digital world by writing blog posts, sharing stuff, sharing other people. I mean, all this stuff get intertwines and feeds off of each other and ultimately it pushes you up the more you do it with quality stuff. Obviously, quality is important as you develop and, and it pushes you up, makes it, makes it easier for people to find you. So, yes, the blog has been very, very powerful. Um, the pricing on the site, there are a number of reasons because – you know what? People use me and other people. I talked about uh, Blake Disher uh, earlier, who's the other SEO who does well for photographers. He's number one right now. And he's the first one to do it in our town. And I think uh, 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 John Harrington did it also. Um, and, and so we were having this thing going on a number of years ago. And this is, I'm kind of stealing Blake's story and the way he tells it. You know, the event pricing was going down the tube so fast that, you know, people were, you know, because nobody had any, any so many photographers coming into the game and they had no reference point. And so he, he just said, I'm just putting up all my, my, uh, my numbers and I'll let people figure out how much I charge. And, and it's, it's like overnight, and I, I agree with them because I'm one of the people that went to his website and raised my prices. It was like overnight, the, the rates for photography in this town doubled. And, yeah, nobody – say he charged $275 an hour. Well, then, okay, I'm not going to charge $275. I'll charge $250, you know, or, or just to be safe. I'm not going to – so at least if I know I'm up against Blake, I'm going to beat him. But Blake would rather – bid against somebody charging 250 versus 75 an hour. And so he, it worked. And so in your town, being that resource, not only that, people link to it and share it. And, of course, that's that whole Google game because now you're a resource again and people are pushing you up the ladder and people are considering you the expert. They're talking about you. They're talking about, oh, let's go to, you know, Rosh Siller's site or Blake's site or John's site and let's see what they're charging because they're the experts. And, and, and so they at least have a reference point, and it helps your community. And I think more, more photographers should do it. And you think, oh, wow, you know, people are just going to rip me off and undercut me. Well, they're already going to undercut you. 
I'd rather them undercut me by 10% versus 50% and then base it off of the portfolio. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's, so, that's um, a great, you know, that's a great reason to do it. You've qualified um, the people looking at your work. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And, and yeah, that's a good point too. I mean, even people look, who come to my website, they, when they call, we close a lot of the deals because they know what they're, they're getting. You know, when we send them a quote, they're, they're like, oh, wow, that's right in line, <laughs> you know, what we were hoping for. Uh, so that, that is very helpful, too. Um, do I have an email list? Absolutely. Uh, I think it's important for everyone to have an email list. Email is, email is not dead either. <laughs> and if email is dead, this is like, like if, you, if email wasn't dead, then, uh, you know, if email was dead, I wouldn't be getting emails from Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, <laughs> Pinterest every single day. <laughs> so if the, if the sites that are supposedly killing email keep sending me emails, it's not dead. And two, when people say SEO is dead, well, as far as I'm concerned, SEO is dead when people stop using Google. When that happens, you're right, SEO is dead. As, as long as people still continue to look for products and services via search engines, it ain't dead. Right. I think I think a lot of people uh, confuse SEO with tricks and gimmicks and you know yeah. keywording this and keywording and what it boils down to is content and and staying yeah. active. If you and let your that, blog sit for six yeah. months, your your SEO is gone. It doesn't matter about your keywords. None of those right. tricks right. can help. Absolutely. Um, I've got a couple. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I, I got a couple. Um, uh, there was a moment, um, I mean, a, a, a note from Audi on, uh, so does one charge a base price and then add on per image? I think you covered that. I think you did say you have, you can certainly yeah. do a base price um, to cover your expenses you or even, even some of your time or whatever. All of that is flexible. That's all up to you. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Yep, yeah, absolutely. It and what I do to encourage people to buy more is I'll often say, okay, the first image is $500, the second $350, and then maybe each, each additional image after that, something like that. You know, just mm -hmm. you can not you can tear it down with volume. Nothing wrong with that. So that also helps. it also helps the price not get too outrageous when you have a lot of items or a lot of opportunity. You want to continue to, so for them to see that value. And keep adding more because they, they paid 500 for one. You know, when they see the opportunity, well, okay, 200 for these additional ones, I, I, maybe I'll grab a couple of those too, or at least get to the point where the number gets lower. So it is, it's a numbers game. It works very well. And, uh, you know, I, I can't, if, I mean, sometimes I look at what, I, it's amazing how many times I will, will send an invoice and I'll look at the invoice and I'll say, if I did a day rate, it would be one third this what the number of images they bought, one third. But the client's not pissed at me. They're not upset because they see the value in every single image. They're gonna use these images to make more money. And, and so they, they know the value of those photographs and I'm, I'm, you know, so it's a win-win for us. And you've given them choice. Everybody likes choices. And the, the purchase of those images is voluntarily on their part. And I think that's very mm -hmm. important. Yep. How would you how would you go about if you lived in a small area? This is from a, one of our 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 guys. How would you go about um, finding out what other folks charge? And and my answer is you call them up, tell them you're a new photographer in town. You don't want to be a pain in the, in the ass. I mean, everybody can be competitive, folks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, competitive is twenty percent, fifteen percent, whatever you know, uh, charging 10% of what everybody else charges is just stupid. Um, and you can't fix it. Yeah, you're not, you're not put yourself. In. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is a lot of photographers, they, they forget they're in business. They, they just want to be photographers. They don't want to deal with the business side of it. But if you're trying to make a living or charging for your photography, you're in business and you have bills to pay and you have equipment to buy and, and family to feed and all that stuff. So you need to really consider that that issue. Um, but yeah, it's, actually, I forgot the direction we were going. <laughs> What's the question? Um, well, how to how to find out what other people are are charging? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, right. Calling, calling up, uh, go to, if there are photography groups, see if you have an ASMP chapter nearby or chapters nearby where you can people and, uh, and talk the business. They're, they're happy to do it. A lot of people will not. There are a lot of photographers who say, don't call me, don't talk to me. You're my competition. Well, you know, in trouble too. Or they have just big egos, don't want to work with people. But I, I'm always happy to share with other photographers. I mean, like I said, I have it on, a lot of times on my website, and, uh, and which I think that even needs updating. <laughs> but, um, but the point is, you know, just start having that conversation, look up, aim high, and, and get, a, get a starting point from there and build. I, I like that. I like that. Well, Rosh. Um, it's been fantastic. We got through most of the questions here. There's a question from Scott Ellison. Scott, um, don't know if we can answer that question, but I think, yes, what you wrote on there uh, makes sense. He's thinking about doing a, a, a headshot, um, uh, like, a, like a booth for headshots at, the, at an event. Uh, and should he charge per session uh, to book 10 per day or price per image? Um, I would I would say price per image would make more sense for something like that because again, price per session they might want you know that's when you get those people go well great I had the session I'll give me all the pictures. Price per image means you have a session yes. can last and, and twenty minutes also, or an hour know, and they, they, they pick they, what they, they want. Uh, Does that make sense? Of course. Excellent. Uh, you have new opportunities to make more money. Yes, you do. Rosh, it's been fantastic having you with us today, uh, taking a, an hour well, out of your day and coming visiting, and we appreciate it. And big thanks to Rob for being well, out thanks. there. Thanks, thanks Rob. Thank you so much. All right. Take care now.